Hello world, we're back with a new video for our research series and I'd like to start this video off with a few questions. How often are you on social media? How much time do you spend on social media? And finally, have you ever come across a video of extreme violence on your timeline? Now, I'd hazard a guess and say that those who are on social media at least once a day for more than two hours have at least once come across a video of extreme violence. For those who have not, well done on curating your content well enough to avoid it. But that's what I would like to chat about today. The desensitization and indeed trivialization of violence through social media. And this really stems from the work the CABC has done in the context of South Africans' perceptions of forms of violence in the country. I'll link the report below. But while that report focused on all forms of violence, this video will focus narrowly on gender-based violence and misogyny online. So I remember my first time getting a color screen phone and being able to download and mix it. Once I logged in and added all my friends, despite never uttering a swear word in my life on mix it, I was free to say any word I wanted to. I remember how freeing it was. Like I could be anyone I wanted to be. The shy guy at school now saying whatever he wanted to. This might have been my first time on social media, but I did have internet access before then, as well as a few bad friends as well. So, in a study done on the impact of violent content on social media, findings suggested that the influence of violent content may lead to an individual being more prone to exhibiting anger, hostility, and a noticeable rise in verbally and behaviorally aggressive tendencies. Furthermore, long-term exposure may lead to a desensitized attitude towards aggressive language and even actively participating in it. So as that research suggested, and in an attempt to stick to the online persona, who I thought was way cooler, aggressive language subtly became part of my dictionary. It became normative. So what is normative? A concept, idea, behavior, or indeed language becomes normative when it is acceptable to do so, i.e. it conforms to what society expects of you. Now why is this concept so important? That's because what is normative is not always what is right. Slavery was a norm 500 years ago, I doubt anyone would consider that right or just. Marital rape wasn't recognized until the early 1980s because the concept of a husband or wife raping their spouse was just inconceivable at the time. However, at that same time, new normative concepts were emerging such as equality. So unjust and just norms can and often do coexist at the same time. And this brings us to our first finding. While doing research for the CABC's monthly fact sheets, which are updates on the GBV and misogyny conversations online, we found an interesting post making fun of a South African woman claiming to be abused by a Nigerian husband. Let's have a look at the video. My husband is a Nigerian. Of course, Lainzini, we are greeted even in our thousand. Anytime I leave the house, my son, boy, good morning, mommy. Eh? Good, good afternoon, mommy. Eh? Good evening. Yay! Siya bingele lwanje kosiya magzara. Moko tuwo. Responses to this post indicated overwhelmingly that because of her support of foreign nationals, she does not deserve any sympathy. Now this may need a bit of context for those not from South Africa. Simmering underneath our jolly Mzanzi attitude is a belief that foreign nationals are contributing to crime in the country or, take a shot if this sounds similar, stealing our jobs and or overburdening our state resources. This has taken grip of South African netizens as well, particularly those on X. Such that any woman dating foreign nationals are often frowned upon or, to put it poetically, exiled. This narrative sort of feels like ownership, but maybe that's for another video. The point here is that xenophobic violence, whether verbal or physical, 
has become so normalized online that even in a country with as high gender-based violence statistics as ours, we are willing to look past the fact that abuse has occurred and condemn the abuse, but instead what we do is we pile on the victim of the abuse due to them dating a foreign national. Now I'd like to turn to another video found on TikTok while writing our 10th report for the Gender-Based Violence and Misogyny Project. This video is titled The Abusive Boyfriend Challenge. Let's have a look. So while TikTok has made significant strides in recent years to be a platform that caters not only for dance challenges and actually has interesting factual and newsworthy content, it is still characterized as a platform for harmless fun and killing some time with interesting and funny short format videos. But the above video also shows the danger in desensitizing violence gender-based violence in particular through short-form content. Responses to the video were laughter and or netizens giving other examples that may lead a partner to enact violence on their significant other. The video further does not indicate any awareness and help for victims of abuse, nor does it really express any sympathy to the victims. Instead, what it does, it, it treats abuse as something that could be turned into a challenge and a normal occurrence for those with abusive partners. These are but two of many many examples where violence was normalized or trivialized on online. So what do you think? Is violence being normalized online? How often have you seen violent content? What are your thoughts on challenges like the abuse of boyfriend challenge as well as the response to South African women dating foreign nationals? As always, we welcome your comments and look forward to engaging you. Thank you.